Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the next president of the United States, Mr. Donald J. Trump. Thank you. So I thought we'd start a little bit early, go home and watch football. And your team now, all of your fans are pouring in. They're outside. Virginia Tech won the game, 54 to 17. Amazing. Lane Stadium, and they're all outside trying to come in. So let's not wait, right? It's great to be in Virginia, a state where I have so many great friends and wonderful employees. I have some great properties here with great, great employees. It's tremendous. And we have wonderful polls. They just keep coming in. A brand new Rasmussen poll just out has us leading by five points nationwide. And on November 8th, we are going to win this state. And we are going to win the White House. We're going to take it back. We're going to take on the big donors and big business and big media. We're going to take on the rig system that has shipped America's wealth to other countries, and they keep doing so. We're going to replace our failed and corrupt establishment with a government that serves you, your family, and your country. My economic agenda can be summed up in some very, very powerful words. Jobs, jobs, jobs. We will cut taxes for all working and middle-class households in America. We will reduce regulations, which will put more money into the hands of our poorest workers and bring thousands of new companies to our shores. We will unleash American energy, creating millions of new jobs and lowering energy costs for everyone. We will repeal and replace Obamacare. President Obama promised his plan would reduce premiums by $2,500 a year. Instead, they've surged to $5,000 a year more. Our replacement plan, that's true, includes expanded access to health care savings accounts with support for those who need it. It includes allowing Americans to buy health insurance across state lines in all 50 states. A dynamic, right? A dynamic and competitive new market. They will be competing for your business. You will be making your own deals, and they'll be greater than you ever thought possible. Believe me, a lot of those deals today, you don't even know what they're going to be because they're going to get better and better all the time with competition. We're also going to block grant Medicaid to states so they can develop innovative solutions to make sure no citizen in poverty ever falls through the cracks. Never. High-risk pools will also help to ensure that those with pre-existing conditions will always get the quality coverage they need. On trade, we are going to end the international abuse, the foreign cheating, and the one-sided rules that govern NAFTA. What a deal that is. And the World Trade Organization. Right now, America eliminates its tariffs, but then other countries tax our goods with backdoor tariffs and close their markets. 
In other words, they tax us, but we don't tax them. Not too good. And you know how that's been working out, folks. It's a one-way highway out of this country for our jobs and our money. Our massive chronic trade deficits are destroying the middle class and shifting money away from workers to large corporations who have no borders. There's a reason the Wall Street donors are giving tens of millions of dollars to my opponent. Hillary Clinton is the voice for global special interests. I'm running to be the voice of the forgotten men and women of this country. Believe me, they are forgotten. My opponent likes to say that for decades she's been fighting for women, that she's been fighting for children. Why then are 70 million American women and children living in poverty or on the brink of poverty in our country? Why has she provided no relief for the millions of Americans in search of affordable, reliable, quality child care? For years she's been doing this and she's done nothing. You know the old saying, watch what I do, not what I say. At the Trump Organization and in my campaign for president, women occupy some of the highest positions. I have employed thousands of women in my company women of different backgrounds, women of many talents. And just last week, joined by my daughter, Ivanka. No, Ivanka. I laid out my plan for child care and elder care. That plan has many great features, including tax-free child care savings account. Low-income parents are given tax credits they can put straight into those accounts and then get a $500 per child match for those savings accounts deposits. Families can also deduct the cost of childcare from their taxes, a huge tax cut for the middle class. We also have, and as we've been doing, we've been talking a lot about improving education. My plan includes school choice for every single disadvantaged child in America. And we're going to get rid of and totally end Common Core. We're also going to bring down the cost of college. Universities get massive federal funds and huge tax breaks for their endowments, but then they don't spend those funds or those endowments on their students. I will work with Congress to make sure these special federal benefits are not available unless universities begin to reduce tuition and student debt. It's too expensive. This will get to the and this will get it. This will really do it. The problem, this is the problem, and it's right smack in the middle of the source, and reduce both the cost for students and the cost for taxpayers. Our students are drowning in debt, and we're going to fix it. <laughs> Women also, by the way, value security. They want a commander-in-chief that will defeat radical Islamic terrorism, stop It's time. Going on too long. It's now in 30 countries. Started off in a little area. They left a big vacuum, Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. And now it's in 30 countries, maybe more than that. We want to stop the massive inflow of refugees, protect our borders. And we want to reduce the rising crime and violence in our cities. We will build a wall. I promise we will build a wall. We will build a wall. And Mexico will pay for the wall. They will. As I campaign across this country, I hear so many stories and pleas from women, especially about drug addiction and opioid use. They are doing their best in their communities and for their families to provide a safe and nurturing environment. But even the best laid plans cannot always protect our youth and increasingly many adults from the scourge of drugs. This is a scourge. 
We lose thousands of our fellow Americans every year to drugs and opioid use. I will stop the drug inflow from our borders, believe me. These terrible drugs come over the border and make their way into our urban and rural communities and into our suburbs. This must stop. This must change. And the people that are there now, your so-called leadership group, will never, ever change it. And that includes Hillary, believe me. Every change starts with a conversation. Together, we will have this conversation. And we will make this change 100 percent. The change will start immediately. Here in Virginia, we are going to end the war on American energy and on our miners. <laughs> Hillary Clinton says she wants to put the miners out of work. Clinton and Kane also want to shut down shale and shut down natural gas. What they've done is incredible. The Clinton regulatory agenda will drive up electricity prices for Virginia families. You know that. You're already seeing it. And will cost the U.S. economy over $5 trillion. By the way, Tim Kaine, less than a week after taking office in Virginia, proposed a $4 billion tax hike on your stake. A $4 billion hike including on people earning as little as $17,000 a year. One week in office, and he proposed a $4 billion tax hike. And you know, he's not very popular. He won his election by a very, very close margin. When I heard she picked, I said, you know, maybe that's bad for me. We're just about tied in Virginia, and we haven't started advertising. And they're spending a fortune. She made the wrong pick. We are going to open up all sources of American energy and bring jobs, wealth, and cheaper electricity to Virginia and all over the country. Another major part of our agenda is safety. I believe every family in America is entitled to live in safety and in peace. Today, the nation just opened the Smithsonian National Museum of American History, African American Art. It's really a beautiful place. I saw it the other day in going around Washington, and it looked beautiful, and we're all very proud of it, I can tell you that. We congratulate and honor those involved with the project and recognize today the incredible contributions of the African American community to this nation. African Americans have given so much to our nation and sacrificed so much for this nation. Many African Americans are succeeding so greatly in our country, and I will make sure their success is protected and supported. At the same time, too many African Americans have been left behind and trapped in poverty. I will fight to make sure every single African American child in this country is fully included in the American dream. That includes the new civil rights issue of our time, school choice. Democrats have run the inner cities for half a century or more and produced only more joblessness and more poverty. The jobs are leaving, the schools are failing, and crime is rising like never before in the inner cities. So to those African-American and Hispanic voters, I say, vote for Donald Trump. What do you have to lose? I will fix it. I will fight harder for you than anyone has before. The policies of Hillary Clinton have brought only suffering in our inner cities, just like her bad judgment overseas unleashed suffering everywhere she went. She's got bad judgment. Of course, she got rich through it all. The Clintons made another $60 million in gross income while she was Secretary of State. Think of that. Worst of all, she put her public office up for sale and then bleached her emails and destroyed her iPhones with a hammer to try and cover up her tracks.
following a congressional subpoena. Figure that one out. There's a reason the hedge fund managers are donating to Hillary Clinton's campaign and not mine. Everybody getting rich off the rig system and who wants really nothing but keeping it the same. They want to keep it just the same. And they're throwing their money at Hillary Clinton. I wonder why. My campaign is powered by my own money and by small dollar donations for everybody and all of our patriotic citizens. 90% of our donors are small dollar donations and we're setting records for a Republican Party, records. Every dollar helps us deliver your county, your country, your area, Virginia, and I'll tell you what, it all essentially goes back to you because we're just gonna make it a better place where we keep our jobs and we bring new jobs in. Our campaign is about breaking up the special interest monopoly in Washington, D.C. We're trying to disrupt the collusion between the wealthy donors, the large corporations, and the media executives. They're all part of the same political establishment. They go to the same restaurants, they attend the same conferences, they have the same friends and connections. They all support the same ideology of globalism that makes them rich while shipping your jobs, your factories, and your wealth to other countries all over the place, in particular, lately, to Mexico. I'm not running to be president of the world. I'm running to be president of the United States and turn things around. I am for America and for America first always. America first. Together, we will rebuild this country beyond, and I mean beyond any of our dreams. We have such unbelievable potential in our country. Such unbelievable. I mean, the potential we have in this country. I've gone all over the country. It, or the crowds, everything. It's so incredible. The people are so incredible. Our leaders are leading us down a deadly path. Whether it's our military that's so depleted, the greatest people on earth, they have depleted equipment. Everything's wrong. Our vets are being so badly treated. Our veterans. How many veterans do we have today? You have illegal immigrants being treated better than our veterans in many cases. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen anymore. Government will start working again. Fixing things is what I do. Just look at my projects in New York City, where I turn rundown spaces into new centers of business activity and opportunity where others saw only problems. I saw tremendous potential. We turned empty lots into homes, offices, and living memories for thousands of workers and their families. That's what I do, and that's what I will continue to do for our country, but on a very, very big scale. Believe me, I want to go in. I want to go into our neglected neighborhoods, the failing schools, the forgotten stretches of this nation, and unlock their potential for all of our people. I've made a living for years looking at unused spaces and imagining what they could be. It's been a great living. Politicians look at blighted neighborhoods and offer only excuses. And by the way, all they want is the vote, in the inner city in particular. Give us your vote and then we'll see you in four years. That's what it is. They do nothing. I look at those same neighborhoods and offer solutions. Everything broken today can be fixed. All we have to do is tune out the doubters, the cynics, and the naysayers, and there are plenty of them. We are a nation of strivers, dreamers, and believers. And that's the spirit that will carry us to victory in November and to great victories as a nation. We will be respected again as a nation.
It's that same spirit of resilience I've seen visiting the flood-ravaged towns in Louisiana or meeting with the incredible but hard-hit people in cities and towns like Flint, Michigan. What a shame. What a shame what they've done in Flint. Spent hundreds of millions of dollars to destroy the water system. If they would have left it alone, it would have been okay. Hundreds of millions of dollars, and now they're going to need hundreds of millions of dollars more. And it used to be where the cars were made in Flint, and you couldn't drink the water in Mexico. Today, the cars are made in Mexico, and you can't drink the water in Flint, Michigan. No good, folks. No good. We're going to turn it around. But that means you need to show up and vote on November 8th. You have to show up. You have to knock on doors. You have to pick up that phone. You have to campaign on the streets, spread the love that we have. This is a movement like nobody's ever seen before in this country. Spread the love that we have in this room. To beat the system, you have to lift your voice, pound the pavement, and get out and vote and get all your friends out to vote. We have 44 days until the big vote. You have 44 days to make possible every dream you ever dreamed for yourselves and your country. You have one magnificent chance to deliver justice for every forgotten man, woman, and child in this nation. The arrogance of Washington, D.C. will soon come face to face with the righteous verdict of the American worker and voter. Believe me, it's enough. This November, we are going to show the whole world that America is back, bigger and better and stronger than ever before. Here is your sum of what will happen starting in January of 2017. I'm going to lower your taxes. Hillary is going to raise your taxes substantially. I'm going to eliminate every unnecessary regulation of which there are many. Hillary is going to keep it going worse than ever before. We're going to unleash, and I mean unleash, American energy. And we're going to be so good to our miners, we've got to help our miners, folks. We're going to get those miners back. We're going to end illegal immigration. And yes, we will build a wall. We will build a wall. We're going to rebuild your very depleted military. And again, take care of our veterans. And we are going to support and cherish our police officers and firefighters. We're going to save our Second Amendment, which is under siege. And we are going to appoint justices to the Supreme Court of the United States who will uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. We will rebuild our roads, bridges, tunnels, highways, airports, schools, hospitals, and everything else. We will rebuild the infrastructure of our country, which is crumbling like never before. It will be rebuilt. American cars will travel the roads. American planes will soar the skies. And American ships will patrol the seas. American steel will send new skyscrapers into the clouds. And I will keep saying it, because I love to say it. We will put our great miners and steel workers back to work. American hands will rebuild this nation, and American energy harvested from American sources will power our nation. American workers will be hired to do the job. We will put new American steel 
into the spine of our country. I will fight for every neglected part of this nation, and I will fight to bring us all together as one people. Imagine what our country could accomplish if we started working together as one people under one God saluting one American flag. It's time to break with the bitter failures of the past and to embrace a new, inclusive, and prosperous American future. We don't have that now. We're a debtor nation. We owe $20 trillion. Our debt has doubled since President Obama assumed office. Doubled. Doubled. All those hundreds of years, and in seven and a half years, our debt has doubled. And our country's a mess. Our roads are bad, our bridges are bad, our military is depleted. It's one thing if it doubles, but you'd like to see everything in tippy-top shape, right? But it's not. It's a mess. Hillary Clinton has a three-word campaign pledge, and it reads, I'm with her. I have a different pledge. My pledge reads, I'm with you, the American people. To all of our people, in all of our cities and towns, I say these words to you tonight. I'm with you, I will fight for you, and I will win for you, and we will win together, and we will win a lot. Once more, we will have a government of, by, and for the people. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. And we will make America safe again. But you know what else? We will make America great again. God bless you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.